Jack, um, you have become a cult hero at the Waratahs, but time's almost up. You're leaving at the end of the year. Why now? Why is it the right time to, to go home to South Africa? I think uh, I had two years here uh, at the Waratahs. I really enjoyed it so much. Uh, for me, it's just uh, going back to the family, spending more time with them. Uh, they're also getting a lot older and, um, yeah, just go back home. I think it's the right time now. Hey, you'll be playing for the Sharks next year. Now, you played against them on the weekend. Did you catch up with any after the game? Yeah, I'm pretty close of, uh, with the backline coach for the Sharks. So, uh, we caught... Backline coach? <laughs> so we, we, um, we caught up on the weekend and it was nice just to have a little chat with them and see where they are and what they're planning for next year. Mate, what, um, what would you take back to South Africa in terms of the way these guys, they're, they're pretty weird over here, I know, but the way Australians <laughs> do things, the way they train and stuff like that, it's got to be a little bit different, won't it? I think the mindset, uh, the way Australian teams play and the way South African teams uh, play is different. Um, I think uh, the Australian teams run into space a lot more where South Africans uh, look to run into the people. Uh, I think that's certainly a thing um, I've learned in my time here. Yeah? And just uh, the Australians are very nice and relaxed and just smiling all the time. So I think the South Africans are sometimes too serious. Well, Jacques, what we've done to, to celebrate your uh, last appearance on Rugby HQ, we did a bit of a straw poll and put together our top three Jacques Potkita moments, our jackpot <laughs> moments. Uh, let's have a look at them. The first, you'll remember this one very fondly as we head back to round 18 last year against the Highlanders. That was uh, one of your two tries. Oh, that's a classic. <laughs> what about this? It's <laughs> a beauty. No, I won't be afraid. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was at the pools, actually, before we you got here. you left them. And this last one, well, we couldn't really decide, couldn't pick a best one. It's just you icing blokes. I think, Greg, <laughs> this is what we're going to remember of, of Jacques what, Pocket. What I love about Jacques is that it doesn't matter if it's his own teammate or the opposing team. <laughs> he just wants to hit something, don't yeah, you, Yeah, just want to make contact. That's what it's about. <laughs> I've seen you run out of that tunnel, and your eyes are, are kind of spinning. I mean, you talk about white line fever. You get white line Fever, once you cross that line, are you a different person? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I'm a, a big joker. I always like to laugh and just have fun with everyone. But as soon as you get onto the field, it's like that big switchy flick. And uh, for me, it's just I love just playing and putting my body on the line and just throwing it around on the field. So uh, I like to do it. Um, whether it's hitting my own teammates from behind or hitting <laughs> one of them, I just like to throw it around and have fun out there. And Jacques, what about this week's match in terms of the memories from last year, that's got to be something which, if you take away from the Waratah experience, that was a special memory last year, wasn't it? Yeah, last year was unbelievable. I mean, um, it's something I can't explain. It was just amazing lifting the trophy and playing with the boys and just building those awesome memories of them. Hey, uh, what, what have you taken from Czech? What's, it, what's he told you in particular? I've learned so much from Michael Czech, uh, not just as a player, but as a person as well. He's just so good. Um, just with everything he does, uh, I think mentally uh, he made me so much stronger as a person, as a player. I've got so much respect for him. And some players come and go and, you know, they, they transition through a club. And I get the impression that you at the Waratahs, you've certainly left your mark. But will you leave with lifelong friendships? Can you see yourself spending extended amounts of time in Australia in the future? Yeah, definitely. I think... Um, I think that all the people I've met here are so true and honest people. And um, for me, all about coming to Australia is building relationships and making friends. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm pretty big on that. And uh, coming back is definitely an option, uh, even if it's just going to come stay here or come, come, Whose come house for a little bit. Who's your best um, mate? I'll probably go and stay at Greg Harris's house, uh, the CEO of the Warriors. He's, uh, he's oh, a good Stancy. entertainer. Good and he, he, could, he, could, uh, he could good meet. So I'll probably go and. Uh, so it is us. Good answer. Well, it's not done yet. The job is not done yet. Uh, the rematch. 295 days later, the Waratahs and the Crusaders set to do it all again. There are about two centimetres on the end of that kick from Bernard Foley that was really the difference last time. wonder what the difference will be this time. We are going to find out from around 7.30 Eastern on Saturday night, live and exclusive on Fox Sports 502. Would it be fair to say that so far in 2015, you haven't quite found that edge that you had uh, consistently for 80 minutes, game after game, towards the back end of last season. We've seen glimpses of it, mm. but it's not quite there consistently, is it? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people put a lot of pressure on us uh, because we were the champions last year. Um, I think we also put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Um, that's, that, that's the way we are and the type of players we've got. Um, we've got our standards. Uh, but we, we, we certainly haven't had that game. We played 80 minutes together and uh, played the way we want to play. Um, 
But um, hopefully, and I think we're fi- finding form now. We're finding each other on the field uh, for the for the next uh, five or six games that's left. Uh, I think the boys are peaking at the ra- right stage. Mate, are they a team that you like playing against the Crusaders? We all know that everyone loves them. They're the darlings of the competition, <laughs> oh, and rightly so. But are they a team you enjoy like lifting yourself for? Do you see it as a challenge, or what do you think of them? Sort of what you've seen from them this year? Yeah, um, on that, I don't know if they. Uh, if everyone loves them, but. Uh, it's always always good good to to play against the Crusaders. Uh, I mean, they they lifted the trophy seven times. So for for us as rugby players, it's always good to play against the best in the world and test yourself every weekend against the best. So uh, playing against the Crusaders is always good uh, because you know you're going to get tested on um, all aspects of the game. So for us playing against them, it's good and it's a good challenge for us where we are at the moment. One of the uh, key matchups this week, and there's matchups with. Wallaby and All Black implications all over the park, but uh, Nemanja Nadolo and Tankeli Nairavoro, f- from a spectator's point of view, are these two massive people running at each other. Nemanja Nadolo has just been incredible, hasn't he? He's, he's been great for him. Uh, he loves uh, he loves to get the ball uh, when he's got a little bit of space in him. Uh, he's a good finisher, and uh, we know we should just uh, concentrate on him on the weekend and shut him down. But both of them have been so used to just bullying little littler guys out of the way. This weekend, those two going head to head, it's going to be quite extraordinary. And it does have a familiar feel to it. You might remember this: um, Godzilla and and Mothra. I mean, it's really not that much difference, is it? Oh, Greg, so you, you're just sitting there giggling. You love that stuff. I love this stuff. It's oh, bad it's bad. beautiful. But uh, it really. <laughs> Shut up, Maloney. Maloney, we're going to get to you. Be quiet. Uh, there are those matchups though, all, all over the field. And and as a group, when you're heading towards a game like this, does it just feel a little bit different because you know that it's all almost got an international feel about it. Is there something that's very different about this game? Uh, yeah, I think the team's got very high standards, both of uh, the, us and the, the Crusaders got high standards. Uh, we've, uh, we've got a lot of internationals that's going to play on the weekend. So um, obviously the boys are used to playing against each other on test levels. Uh, so yeah, it will be, I think it will be test match uh, atmosphere out there, test match pace. And the, the way the boys are going to approach the game, I think it's, uh, it's going to be very good. Well, I, I'm looking forward to it because you're both in the top three in attack, which is incredible. You guys are fixing your defence, but 21 turnovers the last two weekend, two games you've had. Now, where do the Crusaders score their tries from mainly, Mertz? Turnovers. Mm. So uh, have you talked about that? Yeah, well, for us, the, the, the type of game we play, we play, we play a lot of ball in hand. Uh, so we're obviously going to make a little bit of uh, mistakes on that. And uh, we know the, the Crusaders like to capital, capitalise on that. So for us, it's an area to, to concentrate on. Mm-hmm. And uh, we know they're going to be good at the breakdown. So we're just uh, going to look after our ball better and just look after. 